Hey there! Welcome to a short video tutorial on the kneeling knee stretches, one of the fundamental series that we learn on the reformer. Often we learn it the very first lesson that we have. This is my lovely client Gail and she's going to be my my knee stretch. <laughs> she's going to do a million knee stretches in just a moment. Um, but this is one of the most complicated of the first exercises that you learn and it's helpful to keep in mind, I think, that it is a lower body exercise. So go ahead and just get into the first position, Gail. So if you notice, you're just gonna kind of hang out here for a second. Um, the lower body is what's attached to the carriage and no matter who you are, and myself included, and Gail included, I think she'll admit too, soon as we hold on to this bar, we really just wanna push with our arms. Right? right. <laughs> yeah. So everyone will want to do that and you'll see like this whole thing like move at the same time as you know everything's going out and in. So this part is really going to hold you in place and one of the first ways that I like to kind of get the position is by finding the length and the two-way stretch in it. Now I know that's hard to explain to someone who's new. So for the new people you got to really get your hands in there. So. For the new person that kind of is pushing with everything, if you hold this part up and still, then as they go, just do a few, this kind of stays in one spot, which is ultimately what you want. Now, Gail does this really beautifully, but you're, you'll see your beginning person, you'll really have to kind of hang on to them. Rest for a second. <laughs> so, but for a very sophisticated advanced Pilates student, you can talk about the two-way stretch and really set them up for success. So let's go, especially in this first one. Um, so Gail, imagine that your waistline is reaching all the way to where you're holding onto the bar. So kind of the same skill that you build in the short box where you lift up and hold the pole. And then your seat, your feet, your stomach, everything reaching in the opposite direction to push into your feet. So then in that nice long position, when you go, you should have a much better uh, chance of finding your butt. Yeah, and that's plenty. How did that feel? Did that feel any different? Yes, it feels, it feels really good when you think of the long stretch. Yeah, especially in the round one because then you don't feel like all crunched yes, in. Exactly. Yeah. So finding the length, getting your hands in there are ways to help this exercise with people. Um, also, don't feel like they have to do all three at once. They might just do the first two and not be ready to lift their knees off. They might just do the first one. If that's already hard for them to do and it barely looks like the exercise, then maybe you just work on that one for a while. One strategy you can use to work on the precision of the positions is just to simply do the positions one after the other without really the repetition yet. As you're getting the form of the position, it's gonna kind of lead you right to the muscles that you'll need. So once the position is strong, then the repetitions should be working from a good spot. So let's just go to position one, which is round. Yeah, so do your best position one. No, you're gonna just hold the position. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. So now, use your muscles and lengthen yourself into position two. Yeah, and then go back to position one, which is the round one, and then you're just gonna lift your knees off. Yeah, and then come down. So you can just do that. Let's actually do it again, because I said some fancy things in there as well. So one thing that happens to people is they do this one really nicely, and then it kind of falls apart, and as they go to the second position, just lift up and lift your hips up and move forward. And then this happens, and they're not set up for the second position well. So sometimes if you use the positions, you can kind of beat that out of the person in a certain way. So, <laughs> yeah, in a nice, a nice and encouraging way. So, uh, so position one, and then I always say, like, leave your hips here, pull yourself in forward into position two. Yeah, even a little more forward. Yeah, so like your tailbone and your sternum are reaching away from each other. Yeah. And then go back to position three, position, which is actually position one, and lift your knees up. And come down. Let's do it one more time, and then we'll do like a few of each one. So, get a little more lift in there. Yeah, so position one, position two, position one again, and lift the knees up. Yeah. Okay, so now Gail made that look really easy to stay exactly where she is and lift her knees up into her stomach. So let's actually talk about that because it's hard to do. And ultimately you do wanna keep your butt back here, but to lift your knees up, if you need to move it a little forward for a little while, that's totally fine. So 
when she's lifting her knees up, she's actually doing a little bit of like double leg pull. She's not just trying to lift her knees off the mat, she's trying to pull them into her chest. And that's why it's successful. So one more time. So position one, position two, position three, pull your knees into your chest and down. Okay, so now just use that transition of positions. See, you've kind of built the transitions right into there and then you don't have to teach them to them. <laughs> so, so do like three of each one and just do the transitions too. and then come down. That was great. So that made me think of something else, actually. <laughs> so if you noticed, and I'm being so picky, Gail did a beautiful job. On the first two, there was a lot of spring noise bouncing around. However, on the third one, it got very quiet. <laughs> so sometimes if the springs bounce around a lot, it's a little bit of an indication that you could be more in your stomach and that your legs are helping you a little bit. And when she lifted her stomach up and did the third one, everything got quiet. So that one's pretty hard to not use your stomach right, in that Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that's also something you can listen for the sound of the reformer because sometimes that gives you a clue as well. So now let's look at how to get from one exercise to the other. There are three exercises and eventually they should really go like gangbusters. They should be like boom, 10, boom, 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 10, 10, done. So you're building endurance, stamina, and you're giving yourself a little challenge before you lie down for running and you're finishing your workout. So let's look at the transition from, uh, you know what, the most problematic one is getting from the knees to lifting the knees off. So let's talk about how to get into the knees off and then we'll do the whole sort of rhythm of the whole series. So Gail, this one is new for you, but stand up like you're gonna do the elephant. So sometimes if people, depending on their body type, it might be hard for them initially to figure out how to lift themselves off the reformer. So you can also, you can always lower them from above. So they'll be in the elephant. You're gonna put your heels up under the shoulder rests, just like you would be with the knees off. And then you're just gonna lift your ribs up, point your butt down and lower your knees as much as you can sustain. And then you're gonna go. And just do three and then come down. See, wasn't that nice? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's a lovely transition. <laughs> so, but let's say you're doing, you know, 10 round, 10 arch, 10 knees off right in a row. The transition sometimes from the second one to lifting your knees off, there is sometimes like a lot of, you know, pausing and figuring out and lifting up. And I like to just take what you've done before and use all that to inform how you're going to lift your knees off. I'll explain. So, Let's pretend you've done 10 of the round one. Okay. Let's do five of the, of the second one. So by the time you get to the knees off, Joe Pilates has had you close the carriage 20 times. So just do like five of this one. Let's pretend she's done 20. Yeah, lift your chest a little more. Mm -hmm. So you know how to close the carriage. So close it, round your back, and lift your knees up at the same time. Yeah, let's do that again. So do it a little more in real time. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to use the help of the closing the carriage to pull yourself off the mat. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> so, and you'll be amazed at how much easier it is when you have, I know it's sort of a dirty word, momentum. It's not really momentum. You just, you know how to close the carriage and it's helping you now. Okay. Instead of challenging you for once. <laughs> so let's look at one other thing. Oh, maybe we finished. I think we finished. I think we finished. I think you've had so many knee stretches. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I have to confess, I sort of like this series. It's a, it's a challenge. I'm and liking it more. Yeah. And yeah. it builds endurance and it's kind of like a last dash, but it's, I don't know, I kind of like it. It's like secret Pilates confessions. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye. And then don't get lulled in the complacency with this one if you found your sweet spot because now you're going to bring both legs in which is going to change the lever a little bit. So it'll be, it might be hard to pull yourself completely together. This is double leg pull. I can't even look at the camera. <laughs> so pull in and reach up. And then pull in and come in. Inhale, reach. Exhale.